With the release of the new North Africa Mid-War Forces book for Flames of War, I thought that it was a good time to show you how to paint some more 15mm tiny scale tanks. I'm Pete the Wargamer and in this video I'll be showing you how to paint this Panzer III in an Africa Corps scheme, using some of the Vallejo range of paints to do so. Before I started painting, I first of all needed to apply a primer so that the later layers of paint adhere to the miniature's surface. For this step, I had chosen to use a black primer. I would be applying some dry brushing techniques in the following steps, so I needed something that would give me some dark shadows in those recesses. I used Vallejo's black airbrush primer to apply this, but any airbrush, aerosol or brush on primers would suffice here. It's only important to ensure that the model is primed black. To quickly apply the paint whilst also bringing out the details, I use a technique called dry brushing. This essentially involves loading up a fairly large brush with some paint before working the paint through the bristles and removing some of the excess. Simply use a circular motion to do this. I am using my wet palette here, but a scrap of paper or tissue will work too. Once this dry brush is prepped, it can be dragged across the whole model using a series of light but broad strokes. This causes the paint to be transferred to the hard edged details and flat surfaces, but the deeper recesses remain untouched. As I had used a black primer here, these areas remain black and so help to create the illusion of shadows. The benefits of this technique are speed and simplicity. You can cover a large area fairly quickly when compared to more conventional application methods. Plus, you create an appearance of shading and gradients of color without the need for techniques such as glazing or blending. The color I chose for the step was flat brown, and this was applied to the entirety of the tank. This reddish brown color would help to provide a lighter base color to apply my tan colors over. To apply the lighter tan colors associated with a desert scheme, I used the same dry brushing technique as before. This time, however, I used some green-brown instead. I applied this once again over the whole vehicle, but left in the red oxide color still visible on the tracks to represent weathered and dirty track links. Dry brushing isn't quite as neat or as accurate as regular brushing though, so take care when you're working around the tracks and even switch to a smaller size brush if you have to. To get a good solid color, I had to make a few passes over the flatter surfaces. The flat brown beneath the paint did help though, and the areas that weren't fully covered over with the tan color took on a dirty appearance, perfect for recreating a realistic looking tank. My intention for the scheme was one of high contrast. I wanted the raised edges and details to be quite bright in order to contrast more strongly against the darker recessed areas. To do this, I dry brushed on some dark sand. This time around, I used lighter strokes and focused my application predominantly to the harder edges and the details in the armor. This caused fine lines of the lighter dark sand to form and help enhance the sharpness of the edges. For some flat areas, such as the top of the turret, I applied a little bit of paint to the surface too, just enough to recreate the effect of light falling onto the surface from above. With the base color of the armor completed, I could move on to painting some details such as the tools and the rubber trim of the road wheels. For these areas, I chose to apply a base coat of the very dark gray of black gray, mixed with just a little water to help it flow more smoothly. This dark paint further enhanced the visibility of these details by helping them to stand out against the desert color of the armor. While I had tried to avoid getting too much paint onto the tracks, some of the tan color had inevitably spilt over. To resolve this, I watered down some more flat brown to create a roughly 50-50 mixture of paint and water. This very thin mixture was then applied over the tracks in a couple of layers, allowing each application to dry fully before adding the next. This allowed me to quickly and easily return the rusted metal effect to the tracks. While dry brushing had already done a great job of adding shading, I wanted to further darken down a few specific areas and this was done with some black wash. I thinned down with a drop of water and then applied it as a pin wash. By directly targeting the deepest details, like the recessed areas around the hatches for example, I created the appearance of deeper shadows than would normally form. Combined with the earlier highlights, this really helped to boost the depth of the detail in the tank surfaces. 
At this point, the model was pretty much completed and would be perfectly usable on the tabletop, but I thought that I could take the detailing just a little bit further. Under the stresses of war, paintwork is unlikely to stay pristine, and so to demonstrate this on the tank, I took a small piece of torn foam and dipped it in some black paint. Like with the dry brushing, I removed some of the excess paint onto another surface before lightly pressing the sponge onto the armor to create some irregularly shaped and sized spots of black paint. I focused these around the harder edges and surfaces that would be more likely to see wear and tear. The final step was to add some small spots of even lighter paint around the black flecks applied in the previous step. Instead of the foam, I used a fine tips brush and very carefully painted some lines of pale sand next to some of the black flecks. This created a kind of 3D effect on the surface and helped to further that depth and realism that I had begun to form earlier. which left me with this completed Panzer III, painted in an Africa Corps scheme. Now, whilst I focused on a specific tank for this video, all the same colors and techniques can also be applied to other German vehicles from this period and theater. I'll include all the paints used in this guide in the description, along with some affiliate links. So if you're looking to try out some of these things for yourself while supporting me in the process, I would be extremely grateful. Speaking of which, let me just say a huge thank you to my ever generous supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Seth Sewell, Ryan Little, Tim, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Limborg, Mr. Grimm, and Sweatsman. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon via YouTube membership, or you just use my affiliates links, then it is the kind-hearted people, such as yourselves, that allow me to fund the tools and paints required to create these videos for you. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.